Alright, hello and welcome to Big Joe's first tutorial on suspension. Today we're going to be making a solid axle suspension. Alright, a couple tools you're going to need first off hand is precision alignment, easy precision, make spherical. Uh, I think that's really about it. And of course wire mod. Alright, so first you're going to need a frame, or chassis, whatever you want to call it. I use this because it looks like a car frame, and I use these because they look like an axle, but really you can use just about anything you want. Now then I'm going to use Easy Precision. If you do not know how to use Easy Precision, I suggest you go find a tutorial. Place your axles, get out your rope tool, make sure rigid is checked, width can be whatever you want. You're going to go from the bottom center of your frame to the inner center of your axle. Then you go back and do the front. Just like that, basically make a big V. Okay. Then get out your ball socket advance tool. We're going to do axle to chassis, X minimum, negative 0 0.1, X maximum, 0 0.1, Y minimum, negative 65, Y maximum, 65, Z minimum, negative 0 0.1, Z maximum, 0 0.1. Everything else can be zero. Check free movement and check no collide if you want. Then ball socket the axle to the frame does not matter where you click as long as you connect the axle to the frame. Alright, now get out precision alignment. Make sure all three boxes are checked. Select point dash hit position. Uh, snap sensitivity 100. And you're going to look at the center of your axle. Oops. Hold E and hold shift at the same time. Double click. Go to the next axle. Same thing. Other side. Same thing, same thing, right click on the chassis, go to your menu, select two, attach, select both fours, attach, both six, attach, scroll down, select both eights, and attach. Now what this is going to do is it's going to create elastic at that center point. One's going to be connected to that, and one's going to be connected to the center of, the, of this axle. But it's not going to be following this green line, it's basically going to be right there. So no matter where your axle is, it's always going to go right back to default position. Now once you've done that, and you've attached all the points, hit R, go to Constraints, select Elastic. Uh, you can put in your own settings, but a good starter setting is 8000 constant, 3000 dampening, and relative, I set it 1000 just for shits and giggles, it doesn't really do anything. On position 1, you select point 1. Position 2, you select 2. Hit cre uh, create constraint. And then on position 1, select 3. Position 2, select 4. Then 5 and 6. And 7 and 8. Deselect by right clicking on the ground. Hit delete all to delete all your points. And now you have elastics. Make sure width is set to 0 to keep down lag because uh, floppy elastics definitely create lag. Alright, next you're going to need a plate for your steering. You can use anything you want. I generally use this because it's big enough to fit all my wire components on. <coughs> I will um, will post my E2 in the description. Put it in the center. Oh crap, I forgot about doing that. Give me a second here. Okay. Spawn your YouTube in the center of the plate. Get out your advanced pod controller. You can either link it to a seat or you can use the remote control. It's up to you. Next, get out your wire tool. Wire pod to pod. S bar to the plate it's sitting on frame to your front axle and uh, I forgot to get wheels first 
my apologies. Let's get, uh, oh, let's just do 45s. Why not? Go ahead and make those spherical while I'm not doing nothing. Alright, attach those with easy precision. Gary's mod, Gary's mod. Okay. Now, get access entry. I use ten of friction ten, so it doesn't roll away when I'm not using it. Click the outer flat surface of the wheel to anywhere on the axle. That takes care of the rear. And then get ball socket sentry. Leave it all default, don't change anything outer flat part of the wheel anywhere on the axle that takes care of the constraints let's go ahead and get out your no collide tool while we're at it right click on the both axles and the chassis so that way and the seat so that way nothing's colliding <coughs> okay now go back to your E2 with the wire tool wire rear driver wheel to the rear driver wheel Rear passenger wheel, front driver wheel, front passenger wheel. Now this part's very important. Go back to your E2 tool, look at the E2, hit R to reload the E2 so it will correct its position. Then you go back to ball socket, and you're going to wire, sorry, you're going to ball socket the front wheels to your steer plate. X minimum negative 180 x maximum 180 x minimum sorry y minimum negative 0 0.1 y maximum 0 0.1 z minimum negative 0 0.1 z maximum 0 0.1 all right let's go ahead and put my seat position here Alright, now let's do weights. Weights, weights, weights. I generally make my, with my current elastic settings, I'll make my frame 2000, both axles 800, and my wheels will weigh 600. Oh, also, get out your physical properties gun, then go into console, and type in type in fizzprop underscore material space jalopy tire I'll post this in the description so you know it I'd go ahead and bind it to a key if that's something you uh, something you use you're gonna if you build suspensions often and then click both tire or click all four tires okay I think that's everything let's find out seems like it Got my drive, got my steer. Yeah, looks like it's everything. I almost lost it. And that is how you sorry, that is how I build solid axle suspension. Go ahead and um, let me go ahead and show you a little bit about my E2. Seeing that uh, this went a lot faster than I thought it was going to. There. Okay, the way I have my E2 set up right now is made to work with these wheels, the uh, PHX race wheels. But if you're going to use any of the other wheels that spawn flat, then you have to change a few of the settings in order for it to work right. So you go into the E2. 
And what you're going to have to change is on line 42 and line 46, you're going to have to change the um, 200,000 multiply boost. <clears throat> what you have to do is move it to the last zero. So it'll be 0, 0, 200,000 multiply boost. If you're going to use any of the wheels that spawn flat. Okay? Now, that being said, if your wheels don't turn sharp enough, you can change line 61, you can change the 40s, change both of them to 50 or 60 for it to turn sharper, and you lower the number for it to not turn as sharp. So, like 20, 30. You can even go to 180 to make it turn all the way back around. I've actually made a few smart cars that way that, uh, you know, do like parallel parking and stuff by themselves. It's actually pretty neat. And if it's turning too slow or too fast, you can change line 50, 54, and 58. Line 50 and 54, I believe, is the, um, the turning and line 58 is the straightening so line 50 and 54 is how fast the wheel turns outwards or inwards and line 58 is how fast it straightens out so line 58 the higher the number the faster sorry the slower it's gonna turn it's gonna straighten out my bad the lower the number the faster it's gonna straighten out 54 and 50 the higher the number the faster it's going to straighten out. The lower the number, the slower. It's weird like that, I know. Okay, let's see. On line 33, where it says boost equal 2.0 is your shift, your turbo. Basically what it's going to do is take the 200,000 that you already have and double that because it's 2. So it'll be 400,000. If you change it to 4, then it's going to quadruple it. And so on and so forth line 20 through 26 is your anti-theft that's basically gonna keep uh, keep anybody from getting in your car and driving away because I hate when noobs come and jump in my cars and drive away when I'm working on it so I added that if you want someone in someone to drive your car or to test it or basically if anyone's going to be driving it but you <coughs> excuse me you have to change line 22 change the 1 to a 0 that basically about covers my E2. It's not terribly complicated. Basically, just play around with it and uh, you know, fine tune it to your uh, your preference and see what you can come up with. That's basically it. Um, ooh, let's do brakes real quick. A lot of people have been asking how I do my brakes. It's pretty simple. You get out, uh, go to wire physics, the second clutch tool, about the fifth tool down. You're gonna get out your clutch tool spawn it on your steer plate. Now with the clutch tool out and make sure you see the little red ring on your clutch and you're gonna right click on the wheel right click on the axle and you'll see this the green line showing you their length. Do that for all four tires. Fuck. Sorry about that. Do that for all four tires. So it looks like that then uh, get out your numpad input. This is the way I do it. If you guys know a better way, by all means do it. Get out your numpad input. I use 5. Type in uh, 2000. This will vary depending on the weight of your vehicle. If it's light, you'll need a lower number. If it's heavier, then you obviously need a higher number. So 5, 2000 of your numpad input. Then get your output and select 5. Spawn that one right next to it. Wire the output to space on your numpad input then wire friction from the clutch to your numpad input of 5 so that way when you hit 5 or sorry when you hit space it'll apply friction to your tires and see their instant uh, instant stop pretty much if you don't want that then you just lower lower the 2000 to something else But it uh, works pretty well.